Thanks for Bruno and the song, <laughs> and give a great introduction about uh, what Meta is doing about the live patching. So uh, this is actually is the next step we are trying to, to do with uh, live patching, is a natural next step. And uh, uh, so uh, the, the topic is a KLP with a client LTO kernel, and which uh, currently the upstream uh, uh, K patch doesn't really support. So we will provide uh, some kind of like experience we did uh, hacking and to make it work. And then we would like to discuss and how we can actually make upstream to do it much better way. And I will present the first part and uh, mostly related to how uh, live patching is done and uh, through a compiler perspective and LTO perspective. And some will discuss various issues we hit and what kind of hacking we are doing. <clears throat> So uh, this is a brief history of uh, what kind of like uh, uh, PGO or LTO are using over the time. And uh, well, uh, of course we have much older kernels, but before the uh, 5.6 and we use the GCC to build. And then we found uh, uh, basically Google uh, published uh, the PGO support, although not merged in the mainland, but it provides a nice performance improvement. So we switch to uh, uh, LLVM with PGO for 5.12. We, we kind of like to support both versions at that time. And just in case, and the uh, client PGO doesn't work. And, but it, it, it turns out it works. So 5.19, we fully use uh, LLVM with PGO. And we also uh, try to experiment with uh, LTO and uh, in the 5.19. That, is experimental, we did various experimental uh, experiments and with performance uh, validation, and it does show LTO improves. And uh, so for 16, uh, 6.4 kernel, and we actually try to use uh, a PGO plus LTO. And uh, so uh, KLP for Meta, and uh, uh, you already get a rough idea and uh, how KLP is used in Meta. We, uh, use the uh, fork of k patch and uh, uh, for our internal use and uh, but for lto side we need additional changes on top of that and lto and pgo both are actually not supported by k patch and uh, so uh, some actually has a branch and listed all the patches we did and try to support the pto and lto and so uh, for current status, PGO kernel are already in production for uh, two plus years. And uh, we are starting actually to roll out the LTO kernel, LTO plus PGO kernel. And currently, uh, last week is 50K. And uh, today actually probably will be more than that. So uh, next few slides, I will briefly uh, go through the LTO workflow and how KLP is involved. And this slide basically shows the non-LTO compilation workflow. I think for most uh, kernel developers, it's uh, much simpler and uh, is well known. And you basically use a compiler, gen.o file, you use object two, do some massage, and uh, do a linker, and uh, uh, generate a VM list.o, and then you have this uh, linker uh, shell script file, and then you generate a VM Linux. And for the CDO part, and uh, uh, basically for the uh, K patch, and it's uh, also well known, and you get before and after uh, object files, you do a compare. You just to create uh, basically the diff object based on the before and after uh, K patch object files. This is today already being done. And uh, uh, this slide shows the LTO compilation workflow. And uh, the key difference is, and you first use clan and you generate, actually generate an IR file. Although, and the file name is .o, but it's not a L file, it's a, a, a bit code file, L, a LLVM IR. And then you have this uh, linker doing a lot of heavy lifting and it input all these uh, IR files and do the cross file inlining. And internally it generates object file and then the output is a single .o file vm links .o, which including all the functions in the kernel. And then we do an object pool and do something, and we use uh, 
a script and try to generate the final VM Linux. And uh, so there's a uh, problem here and with the LT KLP and for uh, this workflow is the VM Linux total is too big and including all kernel functions. And uh, uh, we did the experiments and with LTO and uh, it take more than 10 hours, cannot finish. Actually, it is much more than 10 hours and we have to stop and we don't know when it will end. So this is a big problem. And uh, so to work around this issue, we actually use a special or uh, basically LLVM linker flag. Uh, LTO object pass equals this prefix. And uh, we dumped all the files, uh, object files. And uh, basically uh, after uh, linker and uh, doing this cross file inlining and uh, generate internal object file. And before it final link to the vmlix.o. So you can see now we get a bunch of files, actually vmlix.o, dot thing, LTO, dot O, and number, sequential number, one, two, three, four, up to, I think, 2,000 or something object file. And uh, so what we do actually is try to compare and uh, compare these uh, uh, object files and uh, after uh, linking, uh, after internal object file generated by a linker. So you can see we have all these special named file and we just based on the number compare and the before and after uh, k patch build and uh, generate the uh, compare the object file and uh, eventually can do the work. And uh, this is a roughly uh, workflow and mostly from the compiler perspective. The next I will pass to Sun and uh, he will describe uh, uh, so what kind of like a uh, k patch changes are needed and how we could do it better. Okay, so I think we missed one thing here. We need to run object to on these dot o files. And so far it works. And, <laughs> and there might be some issues like uh, in the corner cases. So this missing here. So what do we have? Uh, so we first as the like uh, what we described as uh, sing LTO support, and so we we don't do the uh, create the diff object at uh, IR level. So we dump the sing uh, uh, LTO have the the object file. That's what we described there, and and we use that for to generate uh, the patch. That's the first thing. And second, uh, we see the like LTO will use because there's cross file inlining. You uh, attach the init cost step that uh, to the function that will make is to make sure that you don't have like duplicated the symbol. And we need to detect that and, and ignore all those. And in the kernel side, we'll see like the LT. Uh, the compiler will post to fix some files with different things uh, with uh, LLVM dot something. And we updated the uh, kpatch uh, mongo the string compile function to like uh, ignore that so we can actually find the, find the right function. And so that's uh, the next thing is the PGO support. And um, basically we we need to uh, feed in the uh, profile data to the compiler. We need to feed in the profile data to the uh, k patch build. So the compile fr framework is the, the same. And we use the work uh, from Google Fox on like how to get the profile data that uh, is required instrumentation, meaning we have a special kernel, we collect the profile and Basically, we need the profile before any optimization for it to be accurate. And so far, this, this work haven't got upstream because uh, there's a concern about the requirement of a separate kernel to do the profile. And your home is doing the work to say whether we can do alternative, like instead of the 
And instead of you have a kernel, uh, special kernel, use regular kernel, use perf, enable uh, LBR, and whether we get enough benefit uh, or whether that's good enough to, as alternative of the training data we get, the profile data we get from the special kernel. Um, but for now, because the kernel support is not uh, upstream, to the kpatch build support is also not upstream. Uh, okay, so the next is the, if the, there are changes in kernel, will be changes in the uh, KLP build process. One of the things like the version timestamps file, I think that was added recently, and that's something we should uh, ignore. Otherwise, we will get a weird errors. Also, the PGO and LTO kernel adds all change different uh, sections in the file. For example, that call graph profile, that's the PGO data is somehow is stored there. And the comment section shows the compiler you use to generate the, the ELF file. And if with the LTO, we may do the like cross file inlining. So we see the case, okay, that comment section just growing with re replicate like uh, clans 16, 16, 16, like multiple copies. And basically we figure out that they are just safe to ignore and we just ignore them. So we have the upstream discussion about LTO support and so I think the, the, the overall, the, the conclusion is like, uh, yeah, to be safe, we want to do binary diff with VMLinks.O, and which will not just stop LTO kernel, but together with uh, IBT and other stuff will also be handled by uh, VMLinux.O because that's the eventually binary we, we run. We know that is accurate. And and there's a different uh, approach from Google with the LL patch, but uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no recent work in that. So we probably need like more support or we need a very good reason to make the switch. So next step, I think uh, to do binary diff with VM Linux uh, all is uh, suggested and Josh actually uh, mentioned he probably going to work on that in the near future, but that's not so near pass away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll start with IBT because I think this is something we really need to address. Uh, is it? For k -Patch, yes. I mean, not, not only for K-Patch because, okay, so to, to, to explain, so now it works like this. So you, with CDIBT, you, you get that special instruction and BR, like at the beginning of every range function. So that whenever it is called, the processor somehow checks that the instruction is there. If not, there's an exception, right? So OBJ tool currently seals the kernel, uh, which means that all those instructions and BR, which are not used, so that meaning that uh, those functions are not used for indirect jumps, am I still correct? Yes. Then those instructions are removed. So whenever it is used, then there's, a, there's an exception. In kernel, uh, which for our case means that whenever we like to live patch such a function, we are, we are in trouble. Are we not? Um, so the exception is if the ENBR is missing. Yes. Right, so if you just always have the ENBR don't seal. I mean, that's the easy, easiest solution is to always have the ENBR in your replacement. Function. Could you live patch the destination and have an NBR there? But so, if you're live patching the caller and you're saying this, you might, the caller might now indirectly call someone that's not, that's been sealed. I'll, I'll give oh. you the mic. Stand, please. Yeah, so sorry. Stand, if, if, please. Uh, if you're live patching, a caller, and they were going to now make an indirect call to some place that's been sealed. So the NBR has been removed. You have to live patch them as well, right? You're live patching two functions now. If, if you're adding an indirect call, yeah. 
yeah, oh, you, you replied, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, back back to your so simple solution. So you you thought that we would just disable the ceiling, or yeah, maybe don't seal the replacement function. Just leave the ENVR, or um, if the original replacement function is sealed, you can check. There's a way to check whether or not it's going to be sealed at at compile time. So that's another option. Hmm. Um, check OBJ tools metadata about which functions are sealed or not, and then do that same thing for your replacement function. And that, that could be automated. Yeah, right. Especially if it's OBJ tool doing, for example, KOP convert, if that were an OBJ tool subcommand, that would, OBJ tool already knows things, so maybe that would make sense or something. You know? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, the, the thing that Nick mentioned about adding an indirect branch, hmm. um, that could complicate matters. Yes. You, you would have to patch the, the, the one that doesn't have the EMBR that you're indirect branching to. Well, maybe we just uh, inline the function to whoever calls it and just the patch of those. But that's, I don't know whether key patch uh, build, I don't think it does inlining. Um, well, you could do always inline on, in your, in your patch. In the patch, oh yeah, yeah. that's. One of the things we do in 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 Zen for this is in because you 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 end up having you you do need to replace um, functions that have been called indirectly, but you can do that just by having the end branch and then a, uh, and then a jump following that, uh, so long as you are willing to modify different parts of of the code. So even even with fine IBT. Um, a lot of the safety primitives for that will still work if you have room to patch in um, uh, an unconditional jump at the top. Um, that, in, in that way, you can still end up with the same sealedness uh, of your um, of, of your sort uh, of, of your original and the replacement. You can just call, you can just look at the one you're replacing, see whether it's sealed or not, and do the same on the destination. At that point, you're still you're using direct branches, and so you, your indirect branch hits the old end, end branch instruction, and the new target uh, skips past it uh, into the destination or in, into the new replacement. Um, so back to the key patch build question, because it's a different concern, right? Um, the, the VM Linux takes forever, you know. So, yeah, I think for IBT and LTO, I agree. We're kind of at a fork in the road. Um, do, we, do we work on KPatch and hopefully that we can, you know, get it to deal with VM Linux within a reasonable amount of time? That's definitely an option. We don't know how, you know, how quick we can do that. But we had similar issues with OBJ tool. It was really slow with VM Linux, and now it's reasonably fast. Um, so that's one option. Another option is, like you mentioned on the previous slide, like are there other options? You know, there's LL patch, and there's what SUSE does, right? So we something we've always talked about is what's the best way that we can all agree on to to make live patches. So that could be another thing is finally figure that out. <laughs> and if it's not K patch, then that's then we can just do something else and not not have to worry about this problem. <laughs> To, to explain, we had SUSE, we prepare live patches from sources. Right? So that we don't do the binary, uh, binary difference. And we have some internal Facebook solution which does the code closure around, around a patch function. Uh, and now we also look into how to use Clank Extract tool, which would do the same using LLVM IR representation. 
So that might be the way forward in the end. So that's actually my question, like uh, before the before the micro conference to to Susi Fox and. Do we see we're gonna have a one day have a one two chain that uh, works for everyone, and but I guess the answer I get is like uh, we don't think that's gonna happen. Well, in the near future, <laughs> but it's not the case now. It's something I really like to have in the future. But yeah, that's how it is. Maybe to, to do this for next macro conference. <laughs> Okay, so we have still five minutes. So are there more comments, questions? Okay, so if not, oh, yeah, okay, so there's one. <laughs> um, what's preventing you from testing out the um, PGO with like sample LBRs? I believe we have this data at Meta already. Uh, your home is doing the test right now. Oh, <clears throat> oh, sorry. I was asking about uh, doing the uh, PGO testing with uh, samples from LBR. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the rules in baseball, you don't throw the baseball till the, they put the glove up. It's okay. <laughs> um, so we had this discussion like when we sent the PGO patch set upstream, it was like, Patches themselves didn't get knacked. The pull request to Linus got knacked. And we said, like, why, like, why should you do instrumentation versus sampling based? Because both, both work. We have them both working, right? And the, the issue we have with the sample based and LBR is like everything works great on Intel. So instrumentation is, you know, a little bit more flexible if your fleet is a little bit more heterogeneous. But, you know, I think Ingo and Linus were both like, well, why don't you push all the vendors to just implement LBR and then the world would be great. And we're like, okay, but even if we did, that would take years. So can we please upstream the instrumentation patches? And so I think now that multiple people are carrying the patch set forward out of tree, we need to go, can we please upstream this? Because now people are shipping out of tree, like forks in production. And I think it would be better for that to at least be in the tree. And we can still apply pressure on vendors to get something from Perf where sample data just works for people. Whether or not that's LBR, I don't care. But. Uh, just want to get a little bit of clarification. And uh, uh, actually, we do have some uh, experiments with uh, sampling based. And uh, so far, and uh, Initial result is the sampling actually a bit worse than PGO, and uh, some percentage worse, and uh, still need a tuning and understanding, and uh, whether it's a compiler issue because it need to map this, uh, you know, the instruction to debug info and back to source code. That's a long journey compared to the PGO. You immediately have a code there. It's really clear you are correct. So there's still something need to be done, and in the sample based. And it is a little bit more complicated, actually. I'm pretty sure Google uh, has done some work to make it better, but we just started and uh, the performance results actually and uh, shows we have a little bit more work need to do. Yeah. Okay, so we still have one minute, one comment, question. Okay, if no, thank you. Thank you.